and welcome back to Four Corners of the Galley. I'm your host, P. Bo, and you're joining me on another edition of Unsolved, the Murders of Biggie and Tupac. We're all the way up to episode six, and this is East Coast, West Coast. All right, well, let's kick this sucker right off. So last week we had the art of war, and that was kind of like the beginning parts of this battle that we're about to embark on between uh, East and West and Bad Boy and Death Row, and that was like understanding and getting to know your opponent and the first kind of shots, and this episode was like how basically the war escalated to the point that it escalated to. This is, in this episode, we learn all the finer points that happened in the late 1995 that really shaped the way that this battle went down and why two young great powerful artists lives were lost so let's start this off uh do it like we do every week um break this down into three sections this week we're starting with the pop biggie and suge storyline because suge becomes now a big focal point now and then we'll move on to 2006 task force and then 1998 with russell pool and his guys so let's kick this thing off so the biggie Pac. Death Row Suge storyline starts off with actual real footage. And it starts off in uh, in August of uh, two, uh, 1995, August 3rd, and we're at the famous Source Awards. And Suge Knight is walking on stage to give his famous speech that he gives while at the Source Awards. And remember, these Source Awards were in New York. So they're in New York, and Suge is out there just stunting on him. He gives his favorite speech talking about how you want to have greatness and you want to be great and you don't want the producer dancing up all in the videos you need to come join Jeff Bro and he does that great speech and shows all the things that happen the funniest part I always think about that speech is of all the people to be on stage with Shug was Danny Boy who was like the R&B guy and he's all trying to act all hard extra shit doing all this I always thought that was hilarious I remember watching that I don't know if it was live, but I watched that when it all went down, and I thought that was just nuts what he just went on stage and said, and then Snoop coming and doing his thing afterwards, just only inciting it even more. But So you got that famous footage. It's, it shows it basically kind of like, it's kind of like they're showing us, like, here is where it started. Shook goes on stage in the middle of New York on a Source Awards, which are hip-hop awards, and he just flat out goes at uh, Puff and Biggie and does not care, and that's how it all started. So it cuts to the next time that we actually get Biggie and Pac, and it's Biggie and Pac being interviewed. And this is actually the famous Vibe interview for Pac, where he's getting interviewed by uh, Kevin from Vibe, and he's getting his famous interview, and he's talking about his whole shooting and his the whole incidents in the East and West Coast. And at the same time, they're they're cutting back to Biggie, and he's being interviewed. Now they don't really say I don't know who Biggie was being interviewed at that point, but Biggie's giving his opinion on what happened. So Pac's basically going at Biggie and Puff, saying they had to know, they knew who did it, they know who set him up, they know exactly what was going on, and there's no way they didn't know and the whole time uh, Biggie's talking and he's basically defending himself like I didn't know nothing that's my boy I don't know why he's tripping I didn't have nothing to do with this that's always been my man P uh, Pac's on the other side like man I let this boy sleep on my couch he's been stealing my swag this whole time I don't know what his problem is so you get this great back and forth and then the interviewer asked both of them could you guys see each other being friends in the future and both of their expressions like they just paused and was like I don't know. Like, they don't even say nothing. They just give that great pause, and then it cuts out. It's a great showing of how, where these two men were in their mindset at that time and how they were perceiving this, this battle and war that was about to start off and really kick into another gear and how each one of them saw it. So, definitely some great stuff. Um, the next time we get back to it is uh, we're in, it's, they give us another date. It's uh, now we're in September of 23rd, September 23rd, 1995. And you got Suge and his boy Jake walking out of this club platinum. And they're walking out and behind them is a security guard basically, basically like almost escorting him out. And Suge's talking to his boy like, what was all that all about? He's like, man, that's over some female. I guess me and Puff are doing the same female and I don't even know. And he's like, well, Puff ain't really like that. He ain't the kind of one to try to put hands on nobody. You think it was him? He's like, I don't even know. They're walking out. The security guard's like, man, you guys got to leave. We can't have none of that nonsense here. I guess they had a little scuffle or something inside, talking some trash to each other, talking mess. And the guy's like, man, I ain't afraid of him. Guy shows his little badge. Security guard's actually an off-duty cop, and he's moonlighting, he's moonlighting at the thing. Should kind of brushes off. They walk down. They're waiting for their limo, and up runs like four or five dudes, run up on them. Obviously, it looks like they're Crips. 
They run up on him. They're like, what you want to do? He's like, man, we ain't trying to have that right now. Yada, yada, yada. They start barking back and forth. Old dude lifts up his shirt. Classic old school 90s gangster. He got the gun in the hip. He's showing up the gun. The security guard cop sees that. And he goes, no, 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 no. We ain't having that. And chases off these dudes. At the same time, these dudes book out and start getting chased because he... he brandish a gun and obviously in the state of California you're not allowed to have an illegal firearm at all you gotta have it all that registered and no concealed weapons I mean we, we're super tight over here so that ain't gonna happen so they chase out he chased after old dude and at the same time he's chasing after him you hear two gunshots ring out dot, dot, and then it pans back and Shook is standing over his boy's body trying to like resuscitate him like dog man don't go nowhere you gonna be good you gonna be good stay with me stay with me same time, this is outside the club. Puffs running out the club like big. I'm like, Chuck, you good? You good, Chuck? He's like, No, nah, man, this is your fault. This is your fault. Puffs yelling back at him, trying to tell him, like, No, nah, man, this ain't my fault. And you can see it right then and there. This is the moment that Shug made all this personal. So whatever beef that they had regarding a female that they were both sleeping with, and then these dudes running up, and then one of these dudes who got away ended up shooting and killing his boy Jake. This is what puts Shug over the limit. He was in it for the business and just trying to be the man at this point and just take out Bad Boy. He wanted Death Row to be the biggest label. But now it's gotten personal. And you can, I, the actor that are playing Suge, you can see the expression in his face. He's doing an amazing job playing Suge. You can really see that he is, it is on for Suge now and he is not playing no more. So you get that great scene that has that happen. So now, next thing we get from this is Pac is walking out of jail and he's looking fresh he's coming out he's walking down the steps you can see he's happy and who's there waiting for him Suge Suge's sitting there with the white stretch limo he's like Pac's all excited he's like man you really taking care of her brother bringing all your stuff he's like you ain't complete yet pulls out the death row chain puts it on him they have this conversation like look we going at him right he, he all hey, my fault J he Pac comes to Suge and tells him I'm sorry about your boy Jake and that's what Suge goes we going at him right he goes yeah together and that's where this is where these two combine together, and this is what made them so powerful to start, is Suge and Pac were on the same level. Suge's looking for revenge, because his boy just got killed in front of him, and Pac's looking for revenge, because he fully believes that Puff and Biggie knew something about him getting shot up and robbed at Quad Studios. So they connected now. Now the connection is even stronger. First it was the music and the business, now it's even deeper level for both of them, so they really gonna go in on Bad Boy. So they get that, they can see that collateral, First thing he says to Suge is, take me to the studio. He's like, yeah. He's like, my boy. So, boom. They head to the studio. They show Pac in the studio, lacing tracks. I mean, this is when he was a wild man. This man came out of jail, hit that studio, and just started laying tracks down. He's telling him he already laid down 22 tracks. They're like, whoa, 22 tracks? Suge walks it. Well, you know, they're at the studio, and he's telling him he's laying these tracks. In walks Snoop and a bunch of dudes. I mean, they they look like the Dog Pound. They could be the Outlaws. could be a combination. They really don't tell you who's in the room. They just focus on Snoop. So he, Snoop walks in, and Suge's like, man, see, Dre only puts out one song a day. You over here getting high too much, ain't, ain't doing nothing. Look at your boy Pac over here wrecking it, dropping 22 tracks. And he's like trying to tell him, you got to be like Pac. Pac's like, no, nah, ain't only one me, but you know, we can get to that level. Now, I liked everything about this scene. I will admit, the thing that irked me the most was I get the try to go for the authenticity of Snoop, and I remember him having that press down, but... They just did not look right. Whatever actor they chose, I feel like they should go with the height more than they should go with, with the way his face looked. Because Snoop is like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, I mean, he is huge. I've seen him in person a couple times, stood next to him. That dude is tall. So you need a tall actor. Like, go get a basketball player, and then you can put a crazy wig on him and let him play Snoop. He barely, he doesn't even talk. So that's where, that part bugged me. I just don't like who they, the choices they made in picking the actor for Snoop. But I love the whole scene and the sequence that happens. So, you get that, and, you know, he's basically trying to school him, trying to school him to the game. So, the next thing we get to is we jump back to Puffy and Big. And Puffy and Big are sitting in his office having a conversation. And they're conversating about this whole East Coast, West Coast, and how it's all going down. Talking about the shooting that happened to Suge's boy, and he didn't have nothing to do with it. Big's pissed off at Puff because Puff wrote that letter to Pac, and he felt like... 
he was st and and Puffy stopped Big from going to see him. And he's pissed at him. Like, why'd you stop that? That's my boy. You know, we man like that. We gotta. I should be able to smash this and, and finish this off. And Puffy's stonewalling him, and Big is just pissed at this point. He's just really pissed. He feels like everybody was going against him, and he hasn't even done nothing. He's got, he has no idea what's going on. So he takes all that anger. And that frustration he has, and he gets on the phone with Funk Flex at the time on Hot 97, and he starts just uh, going off. At the same time, before he gets there, Puffy basically tells him that Death Row is in town filming a video down the way, and he can't believe that they're actually in town and have the, the balls of filming a video in New York at this point. So he's really heated at this point. So he gets on the phone with Funk Flex, starts just talking back and forth from Wolf and saying he ain't had nothing to do with it, but then he tells new york to stand up for him and why ain't new york got his back and he needs to go they need to go see that throw where they at and make sure that they handle that so there you go you got one issue with with the whole shook's boy being killed in la and, and he feeling like puppy has something to do it then at the other time you actually have big putting out on the radio that people need to go see death row while they're shooting this video so what happens next? You got this beautiful symmetry. And there you go with Snoop. And his boys in the trailer, they chilling, they smoking, they having a good old time, they just cruising. And then you just hear tut, 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 and then shots ring out. And then you can just start, they start shooting up the trailer. All of a sudden they jump to the ground and they don't show who's shooting, but obviously we know some goons or some fools showed up to shoot up the death row trailer. And now, now we really fully in war. We are 100% in war at this point. I mean, if there wasn't a, if the war was fake to this point, now it is completely real because there is life lost and actual people trying to take other people out simultaneously with life loss. So this war is full on big. Um, at the same time that all this is going down, there's an individual that kind of comes into uh, the background where Biggie, Biggie and Puff are having a conversation, and he's, I guess he's a promoter. The funny thing is, that's the same actor from Notorious, and he plays Biggie's manager in that uh, role, so I, I thought that was kind of cool that they brought him back and put him in a different role. So he's over there, and he's, I guess, the promoter. So the next time we see him is, it jumps to uh, December 3rd of 1995, and we in, we're back in Cali, and we're at uh, Shook's house, and I guess... Death Row's throwing a huge old party, and the promoter walks in, and he's there, and he's having a good old time. He thinks he's getting invited by Suge to promote some tours coming up. So Suge's showing him all around, talking about we family, showing him the party, then how everything goes down. And he takes him into this room, and in this room, Pac's sitting at a tape, is just sitting down, just chilling, and there's like three other goons just kind of standing around. And Pac's like, look, man, we need this is like Death Row's like a family. We need you to be loyal, so we need you to be on our side. We want you to drop Bad Boy and only promote for us. This guy's like, nah, man, I don't, I'm not going to drop Puffy. He, he's good to me. He takes care of me. I'm not going to drop him. He's like, I'm going to need some time to think about that. He, and uh, Suge even offers him a, a half a million a month just to sign on and get him going. I mean, this is a ton of money at this point. So he's like, all right, I'm going to think about that. So at the same time, Suge and Pac walk out the room. And as soon as they walk out the room, Suge closes the door and leaves his dude in this bedroom with these three goons. They kind of start surrounding them, and they're just kind of like, and they just flat out ask him, where Puffy's dad, where, where, when he comes to California, where Puffy's mom at. He's like, nah, man, I ain't got nothing to do with him. They repeat themselves, where Puffy's dad, when he gets to California, where his mom's dad. They're like, he's like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Man. They murk him. He's on the ground. He's getting whooped. They don't show you what happens. They just start whooping him. They didn't get the answer they wanted. They didn't care. They just start whooping this man. I mean, whoo. For no, they just, man, they just took him down. The next thing you get is Puffy getting a phone call and he's sitting in his office and you can see just the great acting, it's just his face is like he's in complete another shock. And then the only line he says is, they're trying to kill me. So obviously the promoter calls Puffy and lets him know what, he, what just went down with him in California at death row and then he needs to watch his back because they coming for him. Woo, man, this might be the best use of these characters and the story we've gotten. We've gotten knee deep into the middle of this season. And this is the best Biggie, Pac, and Suge information. I mean, they give us so many nuggets and so much information in this greatness. It was great. And plus, it was more like 60% of the episode, which really was what we want to see and filled in more than a bunch of the task force that kind of get lost and run around. So, really loved this aspect and what they did for this uh for this episode and i love the way it's going with the east coast what the east coast and west coast war cannot wait to see how far we get all right so now we got to all